Hello and welcome to this special CUBE conversation. I'm Dave Nicholson and this is part of our continuing coverage of Google Cloud Next 2021. I have two very special guests with me and we are going to talk about the topic of security. Uh, I have Sunil Potty, who is Vice President and General Manager of Google Cloud Security, uh, who in a previous life had senior leadership roles at Nutanix and Citrix, along with Lior Div, who is the CEO and co-founder of Cyber Reason. Uh, Lior was formerly a commander in the much famed Unit 8200, uh, part of the Israeli Defense Forces, uh, where he was actually a Medal of Honor recipient. Uh, very uh, honored to have him here this morning. Uh, Sunil and Lior, welcome to theCUBE. Sunil, welcome back to theCUBE. Yeah, great to be here, David. And, and, and to be in the presence of a Medal of Honor recipient, by the way. A good friend of mine, Leo. So, pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, good to have both of you here. So, uh, I, I'm a kind of person who likes my dessert before my uh, before my entree. So, why don't we just get right to it? You're, you're the two of you are here to announce something <clears throat> very, very significant uh, in the field of security. Uh, Sunil, do you want to start us out? What are, What are we here to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe uh, you know, just to set the context. Um, as, as many of you know, about a, uh, a decade ago, a nation-sponsored attack, you know, actually got into Google plus a whole bunch of tech companies. You know, the Project Aurora was quite, uh, you know, uh, infamous for a certain period of time. And, and actually Google realized almost a decade ago that look, you know, security can't just be a side thing. It has to be the primary thing, including one of the co-founders becoming for lack of a better word, the chief security officer for a while. But one of the key takeaways from that whole incident was that, look, you have to be able to detect everything and trust nothing. And, and the underpinning for at least one of them led to this whole zero trust architectures that everybody now knows about. But the other part, which is not as popular, at least in, in industry vernacular, but in, in many ways equally important, in some ways more important, is the fact that you need to be able to detect everything so that you can actually respond. And that led to the formation of, you know, a project internal to Google to actually say that, look, let's democratize uh, storage and make sure that nobody has to pay for capturing security events. And that led to the formation of this uh, new industry concept called a security data lake and Chronicle was born. And then as we started evolving that um, over into the enterprise segment, um, partnering with, you know, Cyber Reason, on one hand, created a one plus one equals three synergy between say the presence around what do you detect from the endpoint, but also generally it just so happens that as Leo will tell you, the cyber reason technology happens to start with endpoint, but it's actually the core tech is around detecting events, but doing it in a smart way to actually respond to them in much more of a contextual manner. But beyond just that, you know, synergy between, uh, you know, a world-class planet scale, you know, security data lake, forming the foundation and integrating, you know, in a much more cohesive way with uh, Cyber Reason's detection response offering. The spirit was actually that this is the first step of a long journey to really hit the reset button in terms of going from reactive mode of security to a proactive mode of security, especially in a nation state sponsored attack vector. So maybe Lior, you can speak a few minutes on that as well. Absolutely. So um, as you said, I'm coming from a background of uh, nation state hacking. So for us at Cyberism, it's uh, not foreign to understand uh, what the Russian okay. is doing, uh, what the Chinese are, are doing uh, on a daily basis and the growing uh, ransomware cartel mm -hmm. that's uh, happening right now in uh, Russia. Um, when we looked at it, we, we said then uh, Cyberism is very famous by our uh, endpoint detection and response capability. Uh, but when we establish cyber reason, we establish the cyber reason on a core or almost fundamental idea of finding malicious operation. We call it the malloc idea. So basically, instead of uh, looking for alerts or instead of looking for just pieces of data, we want to find the hackers. We want to find the attack. We want to be able to, to tell basically the full story of what's going on. Uh, in order to do that, we build uh, inside cyber reason, uh, basically from day one, the ability to analyze any data in real time in order to stitch it into the story of the MELB, the malicious operation. 
But what we realized very quickly that uh, while our solution can process more than 27 trillion events a week, uh, we cannot feed it uh, fast enough just from endpoint. And we're kind of blind when it's come to the rest of the attack surface. So we were looking, uh, to be honest, uh, quite a while for the best technology that can feed this engine. And to, as Sunil said, the one plus one equal three or four or five to be able to fight against those hackers. So in this journey, uh, we, we found basically Chronicle and the combination of the scale that Chronicle bringing the ability to feed the engine and together basically to be able to find those hackers in real time. And real time is very, very important. Um, and then to respond to those type of attack. So basically what, what is uh, exciting here, we created a solution that is five times faster than any solution that exists right now in the market. And most importantly, it's enabled us to reverse the adversary advantage and basically to find them and to push them out. So we're moving from, hey, just to tell you a story, to actually prevent hackers to being in your environment. So Lior, can you, I want to double click on that just, just a little bit. Um, can you give, give us a kind of a concrete example of this difference between simply receiving alerts and, uh, and actually, um, you know, taking, taking, uh, uh, correlate, creating correlations and, uh, and actually creating actionable proactive intelligence. Can you give us an example of that working in, in the real world? Yeah, absolutely. We, we can start from a simple example of ransomware. Uh, by the time that I will tell you that there is a ransomware in your environment and I will send an alert, uh, it will be five computers that encrypted. And by the time that you are gonna look at the alert, it's gonna be 5,000 uh, uh, basically machines that are encrypted. And by the time that you will do something, it's gonna be already too little too late. And this is just a simple example. So preventing that thing from happening, this is critical and very timely manner in order to prevent the damage uh, of ransomware. But if you go uh, aside from ransomware and you look, for example, of uh, the attack like SolarWind, uh, basically the purpose of this attack was not to create damage, it was espionage. The Russian wanted to collect data on our government and this is kind of uh, the main purpose that they did this uh, attack. So the ability to be able to say, hey, right now there is a penetration, this is the step that they are doing, and there is five ways to push them out of the environment and actually doing it, this is something that today it's done manually, and with the power of Chronicle and Cyberism, we can do it automatically, and that's the massive difference. Sunil, are there specific industries that should be really interested in this, or is this a, is this a broad set of folks that should be impacted? No, you know, in, in some ways, uh, you know, the, the, the saying these days, to Lior's point on ransomware, is that, you know, uh, if if a, if a customer or an enterprise has a reasonable top line revenue, you're a target, you know, you're a target to some extent. So in that sense, especially given that this has moved from pure espionage or you know, whether it be, uh, you know, government oriented or industrial espionage to a financial fraud, then at that point in time, it applies to pretty much a wide gamut of industries, not just financial services or, you know, critical infrastructure companies like oil and gas pipeline or whatever. It could be like any company that has any sort of IP that they feel drives their top line business is now a target for such attacks. So when you talk about the idea of partnership and creating something out of a collaboration, what's the meat behind this? What 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 are you what are you guys doing beyond saying, you know, hey Sunil, Lior, these guys really like each other and they respect what the other is doing. What's going on behind the scenes? What are you actually implementing here moving forward? So so every partnership is starting with love, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But, but then it needs to translate to uh, to really kind of uh, pure value to our customers and pure value coming from a, a, a deep integration when it's come to the product. So basically uh, what will happen is every piece of data that we can collect at Cyberism uh, from Endpoint, any piece of data that uh, Chronicle can collect from any log that exists in the world. So basically this is kind of covering the whole attack surface. So. First, we have access to every piece of information across the full attack surface. 
then the ma main question is, okay, once you collect all this data, what you're gonna do with it? And most of companies or all the companies today, they, they don't have an answer. They're saying, oh, we're gonna issue an alert and we hope that there is a smart person behind the keyboard that can understand what just happened and make a decision. And with this partnership and with this integration, basically we're not asking and outsourcing the question what to do to the user, we're giving them the answer. We're telling them, hey, this is the story of the attack. This is all the pieces that's going on right now. And in most cases, we're gonna say, hey, and by the way, we just stopped it. So you can prevent it from the future. When will people be able to leverage this capability in an integrated way? And, 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 and by the way, restate how this is going to market as an integrated solution. What is, what is the, what is, what are we going to call this moving forward? So basically this is the cyber reason XDR uh, powered by Chronicle. Uh, and we are very, very um, uh, happy about it. <laughs> yeah, and I think just to add to that, I would say, look, the, the, the meta strategy here and, and the way it'll manifest is in this offering that comes out in early 2022 um, is that if you think about it today, you know, a classical quote unquote security pipeline is to detect, you know, analyze and then respond. Obviously, you know, just, just doing those three in a good way is hard. Doing it in real time at scale is even harder. So just that itself was where Cyber Reason and Chronicle would add real value where we are able to collect a lot of events, react in real time. But a couple of things that I think that, you know, to Leo's original point of why this is probably going to be a little of a game changer in the, in the years to come is we're trying to change that from detect, analyze, respond to detect, understand, and anticipate. So because ultimately that's really how we can change, you know, the, the profile from being reactive in a world of ransomware or anything else to being proactive against a, a nation sponsored or nation's influenced attacks because they're not going to stop, right? So the only way to do this is to rather than just go batten up the hatches is to really, you know, change change the profile of how you'll actually anticipate what they were probably going to do in six months or twelve months. And so, the the graph technology that powers the heart of you know cyber reason is going to be intricately woven in with the contextual information that Chronicle can get, so that the intermediate step is not just about analysis, but it's about truly understanding the overall strategy that has been employed in the past to predict what could happen in the future. So therefore then actions could be taken downstream that you can now say, hey, most likely this these five buckets have this kind of personal information data. There's a reasonable chance that, you know, if they're exposed to the internet, then as you create more such buckets in that project, you're going to be susceptible to more ransomware attacks or some other attacks, right? And that's the, the 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 kind of thinking or the transformation that we're trying to bring out with the joint talk. So, Lior, uh, this this concept of uh, of malops and uh, cyber reason itself, you weren't just born yesterday. You've been you've been uh, you have you have thousands of customers around the globe. He, he, um, does, he does look like he was born. A few I years. I know I know I know. Well, you you know it used to be that the ideal candidate for a CEO of a startup company was someone who dropped out of Stanford. I think it's getting to the point where it's people who refused admission to Stanford. So uh, the, the, the dawn of the 14 year old CEO, it's just, it's just around the corner. But, uh, but Lior, do you get frustrated when you see, um, you know, when, when you become aware of circumstances that would not have happened had they implemented your technology as it exists today? Yeah, <clears throat> we, we have, uh, for, uh, this year it was a really frustrating uh, year that starting with SolarWind. Uh, if you analyze the code of SolarWind, and we did it, but others did it as well. Uh, basically, the Russian uh, were checking if cyber reason is installed on the machine. And if it were installed on the machine, they decided to stop the attack. Uh, this is something that uh, first, it was a great compliment for us from, you know, uh, our uh, not friend from the other side that decided to stop the attack. But uh, it, it, on a serious note, it's like we were pissed because mm -hmm. if people were using this technology, we know that they are not going to uh, be attacked. When we analyze it, we realize that we have three different ways to find the solar wind hackers in a three different way. So uh, this is just one example. And then the next example in uh, the Colonial Pipeline hack, 
We were the one that found Darkseid as a group that we were hacking. We were the first one that released a research on them, and we showed how we can prevent the uh, basically what they are doing with our technology. So when you see kind of those type of uh, just two examples, and we have many of them on a daily basis, we just know that we have the technology in order to do that. Now, when we're combining uh, the Chronicle technology into the, the technology that we already have, we basically can reverse the adversary advantage. This is something that you're not doing in a single day, but this is something that really give power to the defenders, to the communities of CISO that exist kind of across the US. Um, and I believe that if we're gonna join forces and lean into this community and, and basically push the solution out, the ability for us to fight against those cartels, specifically the ransomware cartels, it, it's gonna be massive. Sunil, uh, this time next year, when we are in uh, Google Cloud Next 2022, um, are you guys gonna come back on and uh, offer up the We Told You So awards? Because once this is actually out there and readily available, the combination of Chronicle and uh, Cyber Reasons technology, um, it's gonna be hard for some CISOs to have an excuse. Uh, it may be, uh, it, it may be a, a uncomfortable to know that uh, they could have kept the door secure uh, but didn't. Yeah, or is, yeah. that, or is, that, or is that bad business? Is that bad business to uh, hand out awards for doing dumb things? No, I, don't know. I don't know about, uh, you know, a version of Darwin Awards probably don't make sense. <laughs> but, but, but generally speaking, though, I do think, um, you know, we're, we're all like as citizens in this, right? Because, you know, we talk about customers. I mean, uh, you know, Alphabet and Google is a customer in some ways. Cyber Reason is a customer. The Cube is a customer, right? So I think, I think the rubber hitting the road a year from now will be we should we should do this where I don't know if the cube does more than two folks at the same time, David, but we should I mean I'm sure we'll have enough to have at least a half a dozen in in the room to kind of talk about the solution. Because I think the the you know, as you can imagine, this thing didn't materialize. I mean, it's been being cooked for a while between Lior's team and our team. And, and in fact, it was inspired by feedback from some joint customers out in the market and all of this stuff. So so a year from now, I think the best thing would be not just having customers to talk about the solution, but to really talk about that transformation from respond to anticipate. And do they feel better on their security posture in a world that they know, Like, and, and Leo should probably spend a few minutes on this is, I think we're on the tip of the sphere of this nation state era. And what we've just seen in the last few years is what maybe the nation states have seen over two decades ago, and they're gonna run those playbooks on the enterprise for the next decade or so. so. Yeah, Lior, talk about that for a minute. Yeah, it's a, it's really, you know, just to continue the Sunil thought, it's, it's really about finding the unknown. Because what's happening on the other side, it's like uh, specifically China and Russia, and uh, lately we saw Iran starting to gain uh, power. Um, basically their job is to become better and better and to basically innovate and create a new type of attack on a daily basis as technology is evolved. So basically there is a very simple equation. As we're using more technology and relying more on technology, the other side gonna exploit it in order to gain more power, espionage and create financial damage. But it's important <clears throat> to say that uh, this evolution, it's not gonna stop. Uh, this is just the beginning. And a lot of the data that was uh, belonged just to government against government fight, basically leaked in the uh, past few years now criminals starting to use it as, as well. So in a sense, if you think about it, what's happening right now, there is basically a cold war that nobody is talking about it between kind of the giant that everybody is hacking everybody. And in the crossfire, we see all of those enterprises across the world. It was not a surprise that, um, you know, after the Biden and Putin uh, meeting, suddenly it was uh, quiet. It was no ransomware for six weeks. And after something changed in the politics, suddenly we can see a, 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 a growing kind of attack when it's come to ransomware that we know that was directed from Russia in order to create pressure on the US economy. Sunil, wrap us up. What are your, fi what, what are your, what are your final thoughts and uh, what's, what's, the, what's the big takeaway here? No, I think, you know, I, I think the key thing for everyone to know is look, I think we are going into an era of state-sponsored uh, 
not as peonage as much as threat vectors that affect every business. And so in many ways, the chief, the chief information security officer, the chief risk officer, in many ways, the CEO and the board now have to pay attention to this topic, much like they paid attention to mobile 15 years ago as a transformation thing, or maybe cloud 10 years ago. I think cyber has been one of those, it's sort of like the wireless era, David, like it existed in the nineties, but didn't really break ground until iPhone hit or the world of consumerization really took off, right? And I think we are at the tip of the spear of that cyber really becoming like the era of mobile from 15 years ago. And so I think that's the, if there's like a big takeaway, I think, yes, there's lots of solutions. The good news is great innovations are coming through companies like Cyber Reason working with, you know, proven providers like Google and so forth. And so there's a lot of like support in the ecosystem, but I think if there was one takeaway that was that everybody should just be ready, internalized. We don't have to be paranoid about it, but we anticipate that this is going to be a long game that we'll have to play together. Well, with that, uh, taking off my journalist hat for a moment and putting on my citizen hat, uh, it's reassuring to know that we have really smart people working on this. Uh, because when we talk about critical infrastructure control systems and things like that being under threat, um, that's more significant than simply having your social security number stolen in a, in a, in a data breach. So um, with that, uh, I'd like to thank you, Sunil, Lior. Thank you so much for joining us on this special CUBE conversation. Uh, this is Dave Nicholson signing off from our continuing coverage of Google Cloud Next 2021.